Okay, everybody. Hi, this is Michelle with Creative Operation and Country Craft Creations. And today I'm going to go ahead and do the tutorial for my Simple Berry Fields album. Um, this is a, a pretty big album and it does require a lot of product. So um, we're going to go through uh, how I did the cover. We're going to go through the pages and the hinge. And then um, I'll give you a list right now of... Um, all the supplies that it really kind of took. I took some notes and I tried to get it as accurate as possible, but it does take quite a bit of paper. But this is a big album. It is 10 by 10. It has a three inch spine. It has four loaded pages and it's just has a ton of different, you know, opportunities in it. So it can be used for all kinds of different albums and I really love it. So let's start off by talking about the amount of products that you will need. So this is my kind of notes with my my own little uh, <laughs> abbreviation. So bear with me. I'll go through it with you. The chipboard, you're going to need about two and a half sheets of 12 by 12 in order to make this. The cardstock I used, I used Craft Artisan cardstock um, from Country Craft Creations. The cover and the pages alone took about 13 pages uh, or 13 sheets of that. And then the page add-ons that I put on here required about 18 more. So that's about 31 sheets. So you're going to need a little more than a pack of the craft cardstock to make that. I also did use my colors papers in a yellow, a green, a red, and a blue. And I did use two sheets of each of those. So those were used for mats and things like that. So um, you will need those uh, particular papers as well. And then I also use Summer Ivory and I use this in a variety of ways with, um, you know, mats and things like that. So I did use 10 sheets of that. Now, as far as the pattern paper, this was Simple Vintage Berry Fields by Simple Stories. And um, when I bought the paper when I got the paper for the design team I got 22 sheets total now I did do an organizer project that I'll have linked below because I used some of the ephemera pieces um, that I made in for that tutorial in this book so um, I did um, add that or subtract that from the total number and I had 16 sheets left and that's what I used with this book um, so just wanted you to be aware. Um, this is a little bit of an investment. It's a big album, but it'd be great. And I, I can see it being used for like a recipe album, a nice wedding album. Um, this would be an amazing December daily kind of book because it has so much room. Um, also, maybe a, a Halloween daily, an October daily. Um, that would be an amazing project as well. So um, please don't, you know, be you know, afraid of, of the supplies. Um, if you're like me, I have that much and way more <laughs> in my stash. So, um, anyway, <laughs> um, it does take quite a bit. So I wanted to go through that with you. Now let's get to the tutorial. Let's start with the cover. So, um, I already did do the cover. Um, it's the lay flat method that I have used for quite a while now, made by Tammy of Country Craft Creations. Um, she's the kind of creator of that, and it works great. So I used it for this album. Um, for this, the chipboard you will need are two pieces of 10 by 10. You will need one for the spine that's 3 by 10. And then the cardstock to cover, I did use the Craft Artisan cardstock. You will need um, two at 12 by 12, and that will cover your 10 by 10 chipboard with an inch border all the way around. You'll need one piece that's six by 12 and that will cover your spine. And then you will need one piece that's eight by nine and seven eighths and that covers the inside. Now, just in case you're asking, so the six inches wide um, by 12, which covers the spine goes to about here, the eight inches. And you can see I kind of got it off a little bit, but what that does is it kind of covers up those um, inner spine pieces. So it lays a little bit more smoothly. Um, for when you put your pattern paper over. So that's why the inside piece is so wide. Um, so you can see, <laughs> I kind of did get it off a little bit, but it still is covering the one and a half inches that you will have um, on either side of your spine piece once you put this on. So I will put a link to the method on how you cover your album in case you're not familiar with that, but that's how I did that. So the cover that part is um, completed. So again, it's 10 by 10 with a three inch um, spine. Okay, then let's talk about the hinge. <clears throat> the hinge has a five eighths inch 
um, gusset. So what you're going to do is you're going to cut a piece of paper that's six by seven eighths by nine and a half. And we're gonna score every five eighths of an inch. I'll go through those score lines with you. Now I do also wanna mention before I forget that um, these measurements for the cover, the spine, um, and uh, the hinges and pages all came from Bonnie. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it's kind of a long story, but um, that's, um, I just wanted to give her a shout out because basically those measurements are from um, a project that she uh, had started and um, shared the measurements with me. So I just wanted to give her a shout out. She is also a designer for Country Craft Creations. So um, thank you very much for that. So this is a hinge system that I don't normally use. Um, you guys know that I usually use like an L system or like a waterfall system. Um, this is um, the quote unquote kind of hidden hinge type system um, that we're going to be using and it's going to attach directly to the spine. So this has a, every 5 8 inch score mark. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it with the 6 and 7 8 at the top. Okay. And then we're going to score at 5 8 1 and a quarter, 1 and 7 8 2 and a half, three and one eighth, three and three quarters, four and three eighths, five, five and five eighths, and six and one quarter, okay? So one more time, we're going to score this. So get your pen and paper ready at five eighths, one and a quarter, one and seven eighths, two and a half, three and an eighth, three and three quarters, four and three eighths, five, five and five eighths, and six and a quarter, okay? That's how we're going to do that. And then we're basically going to do um, just some folding and burnishing. So these first two here and the last two here are actually going to be a hinge for your page. So we're going to start with that and then we're going to fold and then you're going to have a 5 8 inch piece that's going to be a gusset. So then you're going to leave that, you're going to fold again. <clears throat> Excuse me, I have been sick and um, my voice is still not quite right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you can see how this is going to fold up. So we're just going to continue on. Um, some folks will, if, you know, I don't normally use this hinge, so I don't really have a good way of doing it um, as far as the folding part goes. I'm sure you guys are much better at it than I am. Um, but uh, regardless, this is going to be a great hinge. And the 5 8 inch is wonderful because it gives you a little bit more room on your pages when you um, load them up with embellishments and things. A little bit more room, so um, that's going to be good. Okay, so you have your hinge system like this. Um, so then what you need to do is you either need to use score tape or glue in the actual hinges, not on your gussets, but in the actual hinges. But before you do that, just go ahead and fold this and make sure that the outer edges are not over your folds because then otherwise your pages won't turn right. So if you look on the opposite side, you may need to trim off just a wee bit of the outer edges of that spine um, in order to kind of make it fit and turn those pages properly. So I do see that I probably need to trim off just a little teeny tiny bit. So I'm gonna do that. And you know, no one is ever gonna see that particular cut. And of course my blade didn't cooperate, which figures, doesn't it? While I'm trying to record. My tutorial. So I'm going to just trim this up with my scissors and even that edge out and then just make sure that when that folds it doesn't extend over that fold line. So when you turn your pages they page they turn nice, okay? So I'm just going to fold that hinge 
and I'm going to make sure, and that does extend a little bit past again. So I'm just going to take off just a wee little sliver of that. And again, trim it with my scissors because, yeah. Because my trimmer didn't do what I wanted it to do. I probably should have changed the blade. Okay, so that looks pretty good. So now that we make sure that that happens, then you could take your glue or you could take your score tape and from the underside, I'm gonna put my glue. Okay, and glue that down. Okay, so my first hinge is glued down. Okay, we're gonna repeat with all four of the hinges. And that, of course, is what we're going to um, attach our pages to. Okay, so now I got the second one and so on. All right, so we'll continue on. Okay. Go around the top side. All right. And then one more hinge. So you can see how the gussets are all lining up and that's what's going to attach to the spine, inside spine of our book. Okay, so, all right, so this is the back side of our hinge. And then what you're gonna do is turn it to the front and then we're just gonna like really burnish it and make sure that everything turns nicely and is nice and flat and perfect, okay? All right, so there's my hinge. And you don't necessarily need to trim the uh, pieces off because we're actually gonna fit the page onto this. We're not gonna like do an envelope kind of thing. It's gonna be a top pocket, so it'll be easy to kind of put it together. So there is our hinge. Now, the total width of this hinge is one and seven eighths. So when we take our book, in here for a second so it's going to you're going to need to center it and it's going to be about a quarter of an inch top and bottom okay the book is 10 inches tall this is nine and a half inches tall so quarter inch up from the bottom and then we're going to need to center it now i'm going to use my centering ruler and i'm kind of doing it opposite because it's got the the zero here with the holes with the quarter of an inch it makes it really hard for me to see. I need that black line. <laughs> so I'm going to use the six as the center point, okay? And I'm going to lay this down, and it's going to be just on the other side of like five inches, okay? Um, just like a sixteenth of an inch or so past five inches, and that should, let's see just right in between five and seven, okay? So that should line it up pretty good. Um, yeah, so that's what we're gonna do, and we're gonna center it, we're gonna hope for the best. <laughs> How's that? So we're gonna put glue on our spine. Um, I wanna make sure that it's glued down nice And it sticks. I recommend using glue for this, wet glue, instead of score tape because I want to make sure that it stays stuck. Okay, so okay, 
So once again, I'm gonna line this up quarter inch from the bottom. The spine is three inches and this is going to go just right in between five and seven and I'm gonna lay that down, okay? And I think that looks pretty good. Now before I get too crazy, I'm gonna turn this around and I'm going to double check it and it looks like I did pretty darn good. All right, so then we're gonna just lay this down and burnish, okay? And I'm gonna go on the outsides first. Um, and when I'm doing this, I'm trying to be very, very careful that I don't move it around. And burnish that down. Get that glue where I want it to be. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, art glitter glue does dry fairly quickly. It does give you some... Uh, some, you know, time to kind of smoosh it around if you need to. Um, but there you go, and that's your spine. Now, I did choose not to cover my spine first. Um, if you want to, you should cover your spine with pattern paper first, but I decided to leave the spine with the craft colors because I, I just wanted to, and I liked the color. Um, I thought it was super pretty. And <laughs> that's what I did. So um, if you want to, put your pattern paper down first. But you should have a very nice movable spine. And I'm going to quit fussing with it. And in a few seconds, this is going to be really, really dry. But let's talk about the pages. I'm going to put this off to the side and talk about the pages. You're going to need to make four pages. And I apologize. Our yarn is getting mowed. So if you're hearing the leaf blower and stuff... Um, that's what's going on outside. All right, so for the pages, you will need four pieces of cardstock that are nine and a half by nine and a half, and then four pieces that are nine and a half by ten. And I have already um, taken care of making three of them. You're going to make four of these, but basically, what you're going to do is take the ten and you're going to score it at half, and then you're going to make a booklet. And this is what's going to attach to our book. So let me show you. We're going to take the ten inch by nine and a half. We're going to put the 10 at the top, okay? Just like that. And then we're gonna score at half, okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So you'll need one of these and then a nine and a half by nine and a half piece for the other page. And you're just going to fold and burnish that. And then I am going to miter this And then what you're going to do is just glue that to this page to create your booklet. That's all you're going to do. That's It's pretty simple. So that'll make your pages. So you'll need to do four of these. So put glue on my tab here. And lay that down right to the edge. Make sure everything lines up nice and straight. Looks like everything lined up really nice. Then go inside and just make sure you got a good stick with that. <clears throat> All right, and that's your page. So you'll need four of those. And again, four at nine and a half by nine and a half and four at nine and a half by 10. Then when you grab your book, this is how you're going to put your pages on. So you're going to, we're going to make top pockets. So we're going to put this down, glue it to the hinge, like so, and then put that down over, making sure that everything is nice and straight. And then um, 
just glue that down and that's going to make our pages okay um so you just want to be careful and if you got your hinge um on good and straight this shouldn't be too terrible of a project right <laughs> It shouldn't be. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, and I'm not going to go ahead and miter these. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to put some glue down here. You can either do it on the hinge or on the page, whichever you prefer. I don't think it much matters. It's whatever works for you. And I'm going to lay this down. I want my page nice and straight with the bottom of my book. I don't want it like super butted up against the hinge because I do not want the page to get caught. And I'm just gonna double check and make sure that I've got this nice and straight. Okay, like so. I'm giving it just a little bit of extra room at the hinge there. I just don't want it to be too close. If you get it too close to the scores, I find that they don't turn as well. And I don't like that. It makes me crazy. So, and that's one of the reasons why I don't use this hinge too often. Because I want my pages to turn well. Alright, so I'm going to put some glue here on the hinge. And I'm going to put a line here. And I'm going to fold that over. And voila. Okay. And then go ahead and, you know, burnish that down. And then you have your page. Okay. So it turns nice. It's not interfering with the hinge at all. It's looking pretty darn good. So then take your second page. Now, this is the other thing, too. So make sure that it's usually easier to start from the back. And work your way forward and the reason why is you could put your page down and you can make sure that it's nice and lined up on the bottom as you go so your pages um, lay straight okay so then you're just gonna repeat the process okay that's all you're gonna do now if you want to put the paper or the glue on your hinge you can do that um, either way works for you however you like it right I'm not gonna go too close to the hinge. I'm gonna make sure I'm lined up here. Then you can, if you do it this way, then you can push that down like so. And then put your glue on your hinge, line at the bottom. Okay, so there you go. So now I have my two pages on here. They're not completely at the score lines. I don't want them completely at the score lines um, so that they don't get caught in the scores and that the hinges turn easy. And that's it. So then you just repeat with the other two pages and put those on. So I'm going to do that and then I'll be back with um, the rest of the tutorial. Let us get started with what we're going to do. Let me show you. And then we'll go ahead and make the pages. So as you know, the book consists of four album pages. And they're going to repeat. So we have a set of two that I'm going to show you. And then we're going to repeat those. And I'll show you how to put them together for the last two pages. Um, the only different thing is that the front cover will have like a folio. And the back cover will have a pocket. And unfortunately, I put this together before I should have and so this part's already stuck down but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I made it and then we'll talk about it but this front uh, inside front cover is a basic kind of folio thing so it's actually pretty easy you just need to know how to score and what the measurements are so it's a, just a basic folio you can lay pictures in here papers whatever you want to put in here and then it just has an up and down and um, a string closure and or string closure a uh, seam binding closure so really easy to put together there on the front of the first page which will be the exact same as the front of the third page because these 
these will repeat. We have quite a few elements here. So you know, um, and I'll talk about this later, but each page has a big top loading pocket. So we're gonna have inserts for that as well. But on the front of page one, which is gonna be the same as front of page three, we have these two photo mats that measure six um, or four by six. So you'll have two of those. And then you have this nice waterfall, okay? So again, these will measure four by six. So this is my stacked waterfall that we're going to be using. And then the mats that I just took out are what is going to help keep the waterfall closed. So when you get the pattern paper on there, they'll be really sturdy. But it's also on another pocket. And then in this pocket, we're going to have this nice booklet. So that's gonna be on the front page. So we have the little pocket with the tag or the photo mat closure, the waterfall and our booklet that goes inside that large pocket. And then on the back, we're gonna keep this blank. So that is page one. On the front of page two, we're going to have this slide closure, okay? So you just slide it to one side or the other, if I can get my fingers to work, okay? And then you pull that out and that's how it keeps it closed. And then we have this gate fold that has a double kind of gate fold, okay? So you'll have lots of picture opportunity there, okay? And again, really simple. Um, how to put this together and then it just has a nice slide closure and I did this so big because I wanted to see if maybe there was a, a cut apart like a four by three cut apart that we could use there okay so that's the front of page two and then on the back of page two we do have some um, free space but then we also have this nice pocket page which is I know kind of hard to see with the craft but you have this nice giant pocket here with a nice giant tag and then we have another small pocket here with two smaller photo mats so we'll have that and then you'll have this nice open space right here for doing things okay so that's page two so we're going to work today we're going to repeat those so the front front Page three will be the same as page one. Page four will be the same as page two, okay? So first off, before we get into the pages, let's talk about this front folio element. And it's really simple. And I apologize profusely for getting it done before I film this. I'm so sorry. If you have questions, just let me know. But for that inside cover, you're going to need a couple things. You're going to need a couple pieces of seam binding about 14 inches or so long. And then you are going to need these pieces. So for the inside cover, you will need two pieces that are 10 inches minus a 16th by six. These are the top and the bottom, so they will go like this, okay? So again, and you should have your cut guide with you, so you shouldn't have to write all this down, but you'll need two that are 10 minus 1 16th by six, and then you will need two pieces that are three and a half by 10 minus a 16th. And I did that just because I wanted to make sure that everything closed properly, okay? So these will be the side opening ones and these will be the top and the bottom. And then you'll just take all of the pieces and then on the, on the short side of all of them, you will just score at one half, okay? So one half on all of the short sides, all right? So six inches score it a half. Do that for all of them. And then once you get that done, you'll take and we'll do our usual miter our corners and then we'll fold and burnish. And then I'll get that book and then I'll show you how these go in. Okay. Um, and I do apologize for that. I don't know why I didn't um, think about that when I put those in, because I guess I, because I had pages in my brain and I knew I was going to have a second set of pages that I could show you. Um, so yeah, I forgot. And then on the back, on the inside back, it's going to be different. It's going to be a pocket. Um, so we're going to fold and burnish all of these score lines and just be careful when you do this, start in the middle and work your way out because that does help make a straighter, um, a straighter uh, score when you fold it. Okay. And then once you get done with that, then I did round my corners and you can use any corner rounder you want. 
Okay. Um, so I just, yeah, rounded all of the corners here. Okay. And then, so I'll grab my corner rounder and I'm using the biggest one just for my sample here. Um, but you can use any corner rounder you want. You don't even have to if you don't want to. I just wanted to. Okay. So we'll do that to all of our pieces here. So I'm just rounding all that. Okay. Like so. Okay. Get this out of the way. So I got my book. We're going to do this. Now we're going to pretend that I haven't done all this yet. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the back of the book we're just going to pretend because we're not going to glue this down here this is going to be a different pocket okay but you're going to want to take one of your seam binding pieces that you prepared and you're going to want to find the center of the cover now the cover is 10 by 10 so five inches on either side of the center mark will give you the center and we're going to um lay down our seam binding okay that is going to go underneath our bottom flap Okay, and again, this is all on the front cover, not the back cover, because I messed up and I and I put it down before I filmed it. So, um, but that will then fold up over that flap, and then that's how you'll tie the bottom tie. Okay, the top flap, when you adhere it down here like so, this is where you're going to find the center and put your seam binding here before you put your pattern paper on, and then those two will tie in the center. Okay. So we need to make sure the first thing you do before you put these panels down is put the seam binding in the center at the bottom, coming out the bottom so that it can go up and over that flap. So I'm not gonna do that obviously because I already um, did it on the front cover, but um, that's what you're gonna do. Now the panels are also, they're they're 10 minus a 16th so when you put that in your trimmer you're just going to back it off just a little bit and that's going to make sure that you're not getting into the fold of the scores okay so and you want to make sure when you glue these down that they are glued down right to the edge of that um, cover okay they go clear to the edge of the cover and then on the side pieces you're going to do this one to the edge of the cover but this one here just make sure that you are not in the score line of your spine okay so that your book closes nice and neat so that's how you're going to do that so you know seam binding first and then it doesn't really matter as far as which ones you put down first um, because the tabs will all be on the inside does that make sense so let me open the other one and i'll show you what it looks like now that it's all done um, again, your seam binding up here on the top flap, just right in the middle, and then your other seam binding, and you can see it when I open this book up, that it comes out underneath, and then I just glued that half inch panel right over top of it, so it comes right over the bottom, okay? Um, and then the sides here. I hope that makes sense. I do apologize for getting a little ahead of myself on this. Um, but I was also trying to design it while I was doing it and I didn't think because, you know, I had the pages in my brain going, oh yeah, I can redo the pages. And yeah, um, <laughs> I can't redo this because the other back is gonna be different. Okay, so let's do the front of page three, which again is gonna be the same as the front of page one. And I'm gonna grab my stuff wherever I put it. Okay, so the front of page three. Let me get this book out of the way for just a sec. We've got to prepare our pieces. All right, so we have quite a few pieces. This one I'm going to put aside for just a second. These are our tags. There's a small pocket. Here is our big pocket and then our waterfalls. Okay, so let's start with the big pocket. So the big pocket here measures six and a half by ten and a half okay six and a half by ten and a half and what we're going to do on the six and a half we're going to score at one half and then on the ten and a half we're going to score at half and at ten okay so we have 
the three scores, and that's going to be our pocket. This is where our um, booklet's going to come in. We have a stacked waterfall that we're going to do. You're going to need three pieces. The first piece, eight and a half by six. You're going to score it at four, and then turn it and score at four. Okay, so that's eight and a half by six. The next piece is nine and a half by six. We're gonna score at four, turn it, score at four. And then the last piece of your waterfall is going to be 10 and a half by six. We're gonna score at, again at four, and then again, turn it, and then again at four. And then we're gonna stack those up. So that's gonna be our waterfall. We have our small pocket that is going to be where we put our mats for the closure for our waterfall. This is two and three quarters by seven. We're gonna score on the two and three quarters at one half. And then you're gonna put it where the seven is at the top. You're gonna score at half and six and a half. Okay, half and six and a half. That's gonna be the pocket. So then we have our two mats that'll go in that pocket and that's what's going to keep the waterfall closed. So we don't need to do anything with that. And then we have our booklet that we're going to need two pieces. So the first piece is eight by eight, no scoring whatsoever. Okay, eight by eight, do not score. We have a piece that's eight and a half by eight. Put your eight and a half at the top and then score at one half inch. And that's how we're gonna create our booklet, okay? So now that all of those pieces are taken care of here, what we're gonna do is do some folding and some burnishing and some cutting. So I'm gonna miter everything. I'm gonna miter that big pocket. This is what I'm working on right now. Um, fairly sharply on the corners so that it kind of helps with a little bit of the bulk, okay? Then we're gonna fold on our score lines, okay? And again, on the longer score lines, try to go from the middle out, and that does help make sure things stay as straight as possible, okay? So we're gonna do that, and then that pocket is basically finished, and it's gonna go so that the opening is towards the spine of the book. So you want that folded edge on the right side, okay? So when we glue that down, we'll definitely, um, make sure that matches, okay? Then we have, let's see, here's our mats. We have our smaller pocket and our waterfall. So let's do this, let's do the smaller pocket while we're at it. So it's the same thing, it's just a smaller size. So we're gonna cut all the corners off and then we're gonna miter the edges, okay? And then we'll fold and burnish. like so. Then what this pocket is going to do is it's going to sit right at the very bottom of that pocket, okay? So making sure that we're in the right orientation, okay? You want your tab for your pocket, the long tab on the right side, and then we're going to put this pocket here, okay? So we're going to grab our art glitter glue and go ahead and put that on. Okay, and then with all my tabs folded, okay, because I want to make sure that everything goes edge to edge, I'm just going to lay this guy down, and it is going to go completely to the edge on all the three sides there, okay? Now, I didn't do it on this, but if you wanted to, you could put the tape down inside, and for the... Um, I should have done that, and I apologize for that, but I didn't. Um, but yeah, you can do the whole tape on the on the fold trick, and that'll be really awesome. But this little pocket, this is where those tags are going to go, so they're going to be right in there, okay? Then we're going to do our waterfall. So our waterfall has the three pages, and you notice that when we each page was a different size, because when we do the scores that's what's going to kind of create the attachment piece to make the waterfall if you haven't done this before um i love doing my waterfalls this way i tend to never get them messed up when i do them this way um and it only takes like three pieces and and you have a six page waterfall 
um, rather than trying to cut six pieces together, you know. But um, this size, the pages will be four by six. So that's awesome. Okay. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take your, um, actually what we're going to do, we're going to do it this way. Um, if you have a one inch spacer or one inch spacer, half inch spacer that you can get from Country Craft Creations, this seems to be the simplest way because you don't have to do any measuring or anything like that. So on the inside of the biggest piece here, you're just going to kind of put that in there right where that score is. Okay. And you'll feel it catch on the inside of that score. And then you're going to take your second piece that has the inch and a half spine here. We're going to fold one side and you're just going to apply glue to that inch and a half spine right here. And then we're going to lay that down right up against that spacer. Okay. And even that up and press that down. All right, go on both sides. Just make sure that you don't have any glue sticking out, okay? Because that will glue your pages together and then they won't turn as nice if they get stuck, right? So you should have a piece that looks like that, okay? With a half an inch gusset in between the pages. All right, so then you would just repeat that process with the last piece, the smallest piece with the half inch spine. Now, if you don't have the spacer and you are using your scoreboard, then literally all you have to do is put it in your scoreboard and you can see where this last page folds at about four and a half inches. So then what you would do is go over half an inch to five and then that's where you would lay that down because then there would be a half inch gusset here and then when you turn it after it's glued, you'll have a half an inch on the other side. Okay. Oh, you can kind of see that. And then, so I'll just do this one this way so you can see both ways of doing it. Okay. So we lay our book. We're inside of our waterfall here. Here's the page that bends. It's bending at four and a half. So I'm just going to line that up at five inches to give it that half an inch space. And press that down. Make sure I don't have any glue seeping out where I don't want it. And then turn those two pages over gently. Fold and burnish that and then you have a waterfall. Isn't that great? I love this method. I just love it. It's a great method. This is going to glue to the top of our pocket and we're only going to apply glue to this two and a half inch piece here this spine and then that way you can utilize the back of your waterfall completely so we're going to just put glue on here just to that score line okay so this is kind of I guess the spine of your waterfall all right and then I'm going to turn this so I can see it we're just going to glue it right to the top edge of this pocket and it should go again side to side because it's the same width as the pocket. Okay, and we're gonna burnish that down, wipe up any glue, turn all your pages over very carefully, burnish that down, okay? And then you can go through and then just press everything down and make sure everything is adhered nicely, okay? So then you can see you have a six page waterfall, which actually gives you 12 places to either put pictures or decorate or whatever you wanna do. And then you have your two photo mats here that will go in the pockets and then that's gonna keep everything closed, okay? So there's that pocket assembly piece and then we're going to make our booklet and the booklet is super simple. Just miter that one piece, that eight and a half by eight piece, that has the score and then fold and burnish. Okay. And then we're going to take these two pieces and we're just going to glue them together to create our booklet. That's all we're going to do. So, um, let's see. I'm going to put glue on that. I'm gluing the tab to the inside like so. 
and I'm just matching everything up nice and straight. Okay. Make sure everything is good. Open it up, press it down. Okay. And then you have your booklet. Then what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you on the front of the page, we're going to put this in here. Um, I did round the corners to our booklet, so we will take care of that too. So this is going to be the front of page one, and then we're doing exactly the same thing on the front of page three. So that's where this is going to go. Okay, so let's get our booklet. We can go ahead and round those corners. Okay, so we have that prepared. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to glue this down to our book. Okay, so we're going to just put glue on the edge. And here I'll show you the tape trick. Um, so that if you don't want to put pattern paper all the way down into your pocket, which this one's a pretty big pocket, so we may not want to do that, um, you know, because it wastes paper, you won't be able to see it ever. Um, then I'll show you. So you just put tape on that one side. And then we're just going to line this up to the edge of our page. Okay, make sure everything's nice and straight. And then I'm just going to gently press it down from the outside. And then I'm going to open this up gently and make sure that it's all pressed down on the inside. Okay, so this is our pocket. And then this is where we're going to put our tape. And just put a strip right over that seam and then that way as you put papers in and out then they won't catch on that seam okay so then after you do that then we're just going to put glue on the upper and lower tabs and close our pocket all right like so Make sure you wipe up any glue that might seep out. We don't want to glue anything down that we don't want glued. That's for sure, okay? So, you have your pocket, you have your waterfall, and see how you can do all of the pages of your waterfall, isn't that awesome? And then, we'll have the closure for the waterfall, and then our booklet will fit right in there, okay? So that's the front of page three which is the same as the front of page one. The back of page three is going to be empty for a layout, just like the back of page one, so don't worry about that. Now let's worry about um, the back of page four, which or the front of page four, excuse me, which is gonna be the same as the front of page two. Okay, so we're gonna have the gatefold, and we're going to have the two, or the slider, I'm, I'm sorry, the slider closure, and then we're gonna have the two kind of gatefold pages, okay? So let's grab the pieces for that. And so we have our pages. You need four of these, they're all the same. You're gonna put them, they measure five and a quarter by nine and a half, and you're gonna put the five and a quarter at the top, and you're gonna score all of them at a half, okay? You have your two closure pieces. So you have, these are um, the bands that are gonna close this. They measure six by three. We're gonna score at one half on the six inch line, okay? One half on the six inch line, okay? And then you're going to have your closure piece, okay? So this is the actual wraparound slider piece. So we're gonna have um, a piece that's six and three quarters by four and an eighth. So six and three quarters by four and an eighth. We're gonna put it in with the six and three quarters by at the top. You're gonna score at one half and you're gonna score at three and five eighths, okay? One half three and five eighths. All right. So then what we're going to do is we're going to, again, miter, fold, burnish, do the things. All right. <laughs> 
do the things. Now, the one thing that I did do a little bit different with this is I'm going to put the tab to this on the outside because I want to make sure that when we have this opening that it's nice and smooth so that these slide in nice and neat. So we are gonna close that on the outside, okay? And I will show you how we did that. See how that's closed on the outside? That way it's nice and smooth on the inside and there's no seam whatsoever to um, catch in there. And it'll be covered with patterned paper so nobody will ever see it. So we're just gonna take a little bit of glue. We're gonna fold that up. This is our little closure slide piece. And we're just going to make a tube, okay? And that's all there is to it. All right, so here is our one slider piece. So we're going to miter and fold and burnish. Miter and fold and burnish. We're also going to round our corners because I think that it helps a lot with getting them slid in and out of that closure piece. All right, okay. And then we have our pages and all of these are done the same. Miter fold burnish, okay. So let's get all of those cut and then we will fold and then we will assemble, okay? And we do need to round the corners on these pages too. Okay, so you need four of these pages. So it's kind of a double gate fold. Well, I guess it's not kind of, it is a double gate fold, right? <laughs> ah, okay, all right. So we have that. Let's fold and burnish all of our pieces. And again, try to fold it over and then go from like the center out. Okay, do that. I need a bigger desk. Or maybe I just need to clean off this desk so I have more room. <laughs> that would be the smart thing to do, right? Um, yeah, okay, so here we go. Let's round our corners. leavings out of the way. So we're going to stack these and you're just going to stack two together, make two sets of that two together. So I'm just going to put some glue on here on one of the tabs. And then I'm going to, with the other tab in the same direction, we're just going to lay that down like so. Okay. Like so, open that up. Okay, so you should have, it's almost like a booklet except for you have the tab on the back here too, okay? We're gonna do another set and this one, just so that we keep it, you know, in our brains um, and in my brain, <laughs> I should say, correctly, we're going to do the tab on the opposite side because one's gonna go on one side and one's gonna go on the other. Although they're the same, you know, sometimes it helps my brain to make sure everything's still in the correct orientation, right? Okay. So then we're going to just glue that down like so. Press that down. Make sure it's nice and adhered. Okay. So we have our two gatefold pieces. Then we have our little closure pieces and you're just gonna take your ruler and on the tabbed side, okay, on your tabbed side, we're gonna add this tab right to the middle. So we're going to put our centering ruler down and it should match up with the center 
being at four and three quarters on either side. We're gonna put glue on our closure tab, okay? Make sure our ruler's good. And then we're gonna line this up and it should line up at an inch and a half on either side of the center, okay? And it will hang over a little bit. That is absolutely correct, okay? And that's gonna just go there. That tab will be covered up with patterned paper. All right, so you have your pages like that. We're gonna repeat on this side to go in the opposite direction, okay? So again, we're gonna take our tab and we're gonna put glue on it. I'm getting a lot of glue on the tip of my glue bottle. There we go. Let's try that, that's more better. Okay, line it up so it's four and three quarters from the center on either side, okay? And then this will line up at one and a half on each side, just like so, okay? Right to the edge. And it's just stacked on top of those pages. Okay, so. Let's grab the book and then we'll put all of this together. Okay, so this is the front of page four, okay? Which is the same as the front of page two. And we're simply going to just glue these to either side. Now, what I'm gonna have you do is I want you to glue this side first. These should match up perfectly, but I think it's easier if you glue the outside one first. All right, so all the tabs are gonna go, the tab is gonna go right to the edge. So we're gonna put glue on our tab. And then we're just gonna center it, or not center it, but just line it up right to the edge up and down and to the edge on the side here and glue that down. Okay, I'm gonna turn it the right way so you can kind of see where I'm at. I'm gonna press that down from the outside so you have your closure, you have one page, two page, and then this is where we're gluing it down to the edge, all right? All right, so there's that. And then this side's gonna go over here. Now we just wanna make sure that and I realize this is a big book. We're gonna make sure that it goes right to the edge of the page and that these pages don't overlap each other and it's not in the score, which it's not. So it looks like it's gonna work out just perfectly. So we're gonna put glue on these. And I'm gonna open this up. Lay this down. I'm looking at the top and the bottom, and then I'm just making sure that the pages are right next to each other in the middle. But I don't want them overlapping, okay? I want them right next to each other, not overlapping. They should go right to the edge over here on the page. All right. So then I'm going to open this up, and I'm going to go back in here. Press that down. Make sure it's nice and good. And there you have it. So that's done. So then just to close it, all you do is you slip this over here and this will loosen up a little bit um, as we use it. And when you get pattern paper on here, it'll be a little stiffer so that it'll be a little easier. But there you go. And that's the closure, the slide closure. Now on the back here, we're going to do this half pocket assembly right here. Okay, so then you'll have a place for the big tag and then two smaller tags. So it's just a half pocket here. And we're going to, let's get our book out of the way for just a second, grab those pieces. So this is again, the same um, as the back of page two. So you have your small mats and your small mats um, do measure let me see, just to make sure I got this right. So you have one that's three by four for each of the pages. You have one that's three and three quarters by five for each of the pages. And then we will have this large, excuse me, large one that's four and a half by nine. And this is going to be a tag shape. If you have a tag 
shaped punch. That's what I usually use. Um, this, when you cut it off, it's a half inch down and a half inch over. Now you can cut this any way you want. You don't even have to make it a tag shape if you don't want, but that's what I did to create a tag shape. Then you have the two pocket pieces. So the pocket pieces are simple. You just have to score them on three sides to make the pockets. So this measures five and three quarters by six. On the five and three quarters, we're gonna score at half and at five and a quarter. And then you're gonna turn it and you're gonna score on the six at one half. Okay, so that's your first pocket. Your second pocket, five and three quarters by three and a quarter. You're gonna score in the five and three quarters at half and at five and a quarter. And then you're gonna turn it and you're gonna score on the three and a quarter at one half, okay? And that's all there is to that. So then again, mitering the corners okay and I do it pretty sharply not super sharp on the top edge but for the bottom edge I go through try to go at a 45 degree angle right through that corner and then that way it takes a lot of the bulk out of your pockets which is really nice okay fold and burnish Okay, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna make sure that your bottom pocket, you know, the bottom tab of your pocket is down, bottom tab of the smaller pocket is down, and we're gonna glue that down. We're gonna just glue the bottom, and we'll do the tape thing again. Okay, like so. All right, we're gonna grab our tape. Put that over the edge there so that our tags don't get stuck and then we'll glue that bottom pocket up. Like so. Wipe the glue off my table, okay. Okay, so that's the pocket assembly. Now let's grab our book and then we'll put that in there and then we have the pocket for the inside of the back cover and then we're done. So here's the back of page four, which again is the same as the back of page two. You're just gonna repeat, okay? You're going to have your pocket piece will go right to that corner, okay? So it's basically taken up half your page. So we're gonna put Tape, or uh, glue, excuse me, on the bottom tab. Right to the corner and to the edge of that page. Okay. Make sure it's nice and burnished. Okay. And then we'll put tape right here again. right over that seam so that it helps tag slide in and out. And then you will put glue on the sides of that larger pocket. Okay. And glue that up, make sure you wipe up any excess glue that you might have. Okay. All right, done. So then our two smaller mats will go in here and our larger tag will slide right in there like that. Okay, now we're gonna work on the pocket for this. Now, the one thing I do need to double check and make sure you know is that you cannot adhere it to 
the back without the pattern paper on first. So I will show you how to make the pocket. So this is 11 by five and a half. So 11 at the top, we're gonna score at half, one, one and a half, nine and a half, 10, 10 and a half. Okay, so again, one half, one, one and a half, nine and a half, 10, 10 and a half. Okay, so if you prefer, you can do half, one, one and a half, and then turn it half, one, one and a half. Okay, however you want to do it. And then turn it this way so that the five and a half is at the top. And on one side only, do half, one, one and a half. Okay, so you basically will have three half inch score lines or spaces on three sides. Okay. One, this top one will be empty. Okay. So then what we're going to do is we're going to make some cuts. Now, um, here is how we're going to do it. So you want the sides, the, the outer tabs, the outer half inch tabs are going to glue to the book. The inside um, half inch pieces, the two inside half inch pieces are going to be like the gussets for the pockets. So I'm only going to miter the outer half inch. I'm going to leave the other two pieces alone. I'm not going to miter those, just that half inch. Okay. So on both sides, just that half inch. Okay. Then what we're going to do, if you look down at the bottom, you have nine squares that we created here with the score, with the scores. You're going to cut those out and you're going to cut them straight up and you're not going to miter. Okay. And you're going to cut the scores out and just cut them straight up and cut that square just completely out. like so. Okay. Let's see if I can get my scissors to go all the way there. <laughs> so you should have a piece that looks like this. Okay. And I'm doing this because I really want to make sure that there's a lot of support at the bottom and I don't want to have anything, um, you know, unmitered and I want it to kind of like look as square as possible if one was looking at the bottom um my thing but anyways straight up and down cut those nine squares out and we're going to fold and burnish and you're going to do an accordion fold okay so we're going to just fold that up into an accordion so it kind of looks like an m or a w okay we're going to do that on all the sides okay and then again, like so, I just realized I forgot one little score. Okay, so with your piece like this, and it's nothing that we can't fix, this is amazing. All right, so we're gonna put this back in our scoreboard. Your scores should line up, the bottom of your, your piece should line up at one half and nine and a half, okay? That should be the edges of your cardstock. So what we should have done is put one more score just through the bottom at another half an inch. So we're doing that at two and at nine, okay? And you're gonna actually cut that out as well, okay? So straight and straight. Sorry about that. We're just making a little extra score here, but we're not, don't go through the pocket, okay? So, just one extra half inch just to where the bottom of the pocket is. And we're gonna cut that out. So this is what you actually should have, okay? So when that happens, when we fold it up, this will glue to the bottom. And then when this folds in, it should glue right to the side and not hopefully catch. If it does catch, take a sliver out just to make sure that it doesn't catch, okay? So fold it in and kind of look and make sure it looks like it's gonna work pretty darn good. All right, I just want it to meet. I don't want it to catch. I don't want it to fold into each other. Okay, so let's check this other side. Make sure that when I fold and burnish everything, it's happy. I want it to be happy. I think take a little more of a sliver out of the bottom just a tad. I'm going to turn it this way just so I can see better. 
just a little bit. And it's important to cut the scores out. That does give you that extra little sliver most of the time. Okay, so we'll do that again. And that, oh, that's way happier. Okay, yep. We're way yeah. going to glue this pocket on top. So you can see why you have to wait for the pattern paper because a lot of this is gonna show. So we do have to wait. Um, so then we will just put glue on here, okay? And then put it down where we want it, okay? So I'm thinking that we'll probably do at least a half an inch up from the bottom and glue that in. All right, so, but just keep this piece, clip it into your book, okay, and keep it safe, and then we will put that in later. That's the only thing that we cannot do until um, it's decorated, but then that's basically what we're going to do. So, again, we'll just kind of walk through, but this is going to be a folio section that just opens up, and you can put things in it. It'll be nice and decorated. You have this waterfall piece here with the two mats that will help with the closure. You have your booklet in the pocket behind the waterfall. Then you turn the page. We're going to have a layout here. We're going to have a slide closure double gatefold here, okay, which is really cool, I think. I think that's going to be really fun. Then we turn the page and we have our half pocket here, okay, so this half is plain. We have a big tag, we have two smaller tags in this smaller pocket, and then we repeat with another waterfall page, another layout page, another slide page with the double gatefold, and then another pocket page, okay? And then we have our accordion that will go in here, okay? So that's, that's the um, tutorial. I hope that that made sense, and if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks for watching, and I will see you soon. The tags for your pages. So you're gonna have two giant tags that will go in pages one and three that measure six across by eight high, okay? So six by eight, you need two of those, and then you're going to make four tags that will go into two in page two and two in page four. And these four tags measure four by eight a piece. Um, they will just slide into the top pocket. The seam binding will help keep them from going down into your project. And again, the larger one will go into, if I can get this pocket open, um, the larger ones will go into pages one and three, and the two smaller ones, two each, will go into two and four. And I like the way that it looks from the top with all the, the bows hanging out the top. I just think that's really cool. So there is that. So we'll just pop those in there and there you go. Okay, now I think I've done it. <laughs> Thank you for, for everything, guys.